So friends, uh, as far as substantive issues are concerned, this will be our last topic for the course and we are going to discuss the issue of population. Obviously, it is related to the earlier issue of natural and social selection. In discussing about population, I would like to include four topics. One, I will say something about Malthusian theory of population. Then I will talk about world population growth, so you have an idea of how has the population of the world increased during last nearly 200 years and what are the recent trends. And then I will come to the issue of population of India. What has happened to population of India in the recent past? And then to explain world population growth and changes in population of India, I will talk about demographic transition theory. So I will state what demographic transition theory is and what have been the major differences in demographic transition between developed countries and developing countries. And this will be the last substantive issue in introductory sociology. After this, I will only recapitulate sociological theory and maybe add something to that. And then I want to spend one, one hour on research methods and then we will have open discussion. Now friends, the issue of population has appeared here and there in historical, philosophical, religious and other forms of literature. You do find reference to population in Indian religious literature also. And normally large population is not considered to be good. Good characteristics, bravery, honesty, divinity, humanity, they are compassion, love, they are mostly associated with small populations and small groups. In Mahabharat, our heroes, which are the symbols of virtues, were only limited in number five. While the army of the villains or Kauravas was in lakhs. And there are references in religious literature that uh, when the earth cannot bear the burden of excessive population. Excessive population is associated with uh, the age of Kali, age of sins. Then the earth goes to God, Vishnu or some, some God and expresses uh, her problems. Large population is associated with problems. In Western religious philosophical traditions also, there are references, but uh, there is no serious discussion of population as such, neither in economics nor in political science. Even sociologists, uh, sociology we say came into being quite late 
about 200 years ago. So sociologists should have been more aware of population trends, but even there, there is not much discussion of population. As compared to philosophers, historians, anthropologists, and psychologists of earlier time, there is more discussion of population in sociology. Emile Durkheim was aware of population trends. Karl Marx has also written on population. Though the purpose of writing on population for Karl Marx was basically to attack the Malthusian theory of population. Sorokin, one day I mentioned Sorokin's name, P. Sorokin, who propounded this cyclical theory of social change. Sanset, ideational are two extreme phases of social change and in between or the optimum or the middle of the road or the best phase is idealistic. Among major sociologists, uh, Sorokin has reviewed literature on population maximal and looked at relationship between size of population and causes of population growth, birth rate, death rate. He has also related population size to conflicts, economic development, crime, religion, many other things. But for a serious discussion of population, we always remember T.R. Malthus. T.R. Malthus was a professor of political economy and he was also a religious priest, clergyman, a professor of political economics and a clergyman, a priest. In 1798, he wrote a book whose title was an essay on the principle of population. Before Malthus wrote this essay, actually this essay is a full length book. The title is an essay on the principle of population, but it's a book. It's not a small essay. Before this, the position in the Western world was position on population, then population and development go together. So population is good, population growth is good, population is conducive to development. And many philosophers had written that growth of population indicates peace, development, equilibrium, justice, things which can be called good. Growth of population indicates that something good is happening, that the society is free from war, conflicts, forces of disintegration are under control, and there is agricultural expansion, more food production, in general more economic development. They also believed that growth of population will lead to economic development. And uh, the equations were worked out how population growth will lead to economic development. In this context, in 1798, T.R. Malthus wrote this essay. T.R. Malthus's family uh, used to have visitors in the best intellectual circles of the country at that time. T.R. Malthus knew many intellectuals, philosophers, socialists and developmentalists of his time because they used to visit his family. They were his father's friend. And T.R. Malthus had heard them T.R. Malthus had seen that philosophers of that time, there were basically two tendencies at that time. One, a scientific, 
scientism, you can call it scientism. And another tendency among philosophers was a socialistic tendency. There were some who believed that development of science can solve all problems of mankind. That science will not only contribute to economic production, science will not only produce more, science does not mean only technological development, science also means that man will become more rational, more ascetic, more compassionate, more virtuous and so in the age of science all problems of mankind will be solved. That was the idea at that time. Some, uh, some people who were great admirer of science, they even believed that a time will come when you do not have to depend on agricultural production at all. Man will not require food from agriculture. Maybe science will do something. Maybe something in the form of tablets. You just take one tablet and you are well fed. You get your hunger is satisfied and your nutritional needs are also satisfied. And those who will be of scientific bent of mind when science develops, they believed, this was a belief that when science will develop further, then uh, you can see realization or actualization of heaven on this planet Earth. Nobody will have any hatred towards anybody. Nobody will, will be jealous. Perhaps there will be no need because everybody will have plenty of everything. There will be no war, no passion, no uh, conflict of any kind. Conflict over land, conflict over money, women, political conflicts, jealousy, hatred, nothing. In the age of science, man will be perfect and all his needs will be satisfied. I can quote uh, some names and some books which contain these ideas. People who produce this kind of idea, but that will take more time. So I am only in very, very brief terms suggesting what was the background in which Malthus wrote this essay. There were others who were socialists who thought that all problems of mankind and problems, same problem, poverty, unemployment, inequality, conflicts, disintegration, alienation, dissatisfaction. These problems are because the resources of society or the wealth of society is unequally distributed among different sections and people. Tomorrow, by having a more socialistic orientation, by having more equality of wealth, of resources, you can create a situation in which all the existing problems of society will end. So for them, uh, as for scientists, scientism, growth of science and scientific temper, today's language we call it scientific temper. Growth of science and scientific temper will be uh, solution to all, pro all conceivable problems of mankind. And the socialists thought that a socialistic pattern of society, when the wealth of society is more equally distributed, then this will be a panacea for all problems of mankind, some kind of Ram Raj. In this background, Malthus presented a very pessimistic philosophy. And what he said? He said that food is necessary for human survival. Unlike other scientists and others, he said food is necessary. And second, he said that passion between sexes will also remain same. As scientists thought 
that a scientifically uh, rational, more advanced, more conscious persons will lose passion for sex. They will be more ascetic kind. Men will become embodiment of virtues. But Malta said no. In his book he argues that passion between sexes will also remain safe. And as a consequence of that, he says that population or uh, a tendency in human population to grow, means population growth, will be faster than the means of subsistence. Population will grow faster than means of subsistence. And a population grows faster than means of subsistence or food for a long period of time. Then there is an imbalance and this imbalance keeps on increasing day by day, year by year, decade by decade. Imbalance between population and food keeps on increasing and that that, that imbalance cannot continue indefinitely. So sometime uh, the population will be checked and uh, how population will be checked? Population can be checked either if mankind exercises restraint on fertility or childbirth or uh, or there are forces, natural forces or maybe social forces also which lead to higher death rate. So either birth rate declines or death rate increases. And in, in both the cases, Malthus said that in both the cases there is uh, suffering, misery. In both the cases there is suffering or misery. T.R. Malthus is called the doomsday philosopher because he does not see any progress or he does not believe that well-being or happiness of mankind will continue to increase. And why they will be suffering, why they will be measuring? Because of conflict between availability of means of production, uh, means of subsistence, food. For him, uh, food is the most important thing in production. It is called means of subsistence. You have to depend on food. Unlike other philosophers, science, science philosophers who believe that food may not be required, Malta said that no, man's dependence on food will continue. And agricultural production will determine the level of happiness or unhappiness of mankind. And passion between sexes will remain. He said that whatever is bad in society, he was a Catholic Christian priest, so naturally he also believed that uh, sex is a sin. For him, sex would be a sin. Believing in traditional mythological Christian ideas, uh, sex is a sin, but the sin will remain. Because according to Malthus, uh, if many bad things in society, conflicts, wars, uh, jealousy, or many other sinful activities, vices, are because of sex, then this is also true that all the good things, uh, compassion, love, good things of society, aesthetics, good things of society are also because of sex, and sex will continue. In some sociology books, uh, four principles of Malthus are written. Uh, what I have said, this is on the basis of original writings of Malthus, his, his essay on principle of population is there in our library, you can read from there. But in uh, sociology books I have seen that uh, Malthus's principles of population are summarized in the form of four principles. So let me write those principles. First principle, increase 
these are four principles of Malthus. First principle is that increase in population is limited by means of subsistence. That means population cannot increase indefinitely. Population growth is limited, increase in population is limited by means of subsistence. At a given level of means of subsistence, there is a population, maximum population that can survive. If population, give, if population goes beyond that point, then it will lead to more deaths. What form deaths will take, that is a different issue, but it will take to a situation when more deaths occur, death rate rises. Population increases when means of production increase. And third, third principle is that population if left unchecked could double itself every 25 years. Population, if left unchecked, could double itself every 25 years. And fourth principle, population is kept under check by moral restraints famine, pestilence and war. I thought that I should also write the principles of population by Malthus as they are given in the books. So that if a question is asked, if a question is asked that what are Malthus, Malthus's principles of population, you have to write these four things, at least, plus explanation of them. First, that increase in population, now I will explain these points. Increase in population is limited by means of subsistence. So means of subsistence means food. Population increases when means of production increase. So if there is less food, if agricultural productivity is less, if wheat, paddy, pulses are produced less, if fruits are produced less, vegetables are produced less, then population is also less. And when there is agricultural revolution, if there is any revolution in food production, then the size of population will also increase. Because population is closely connected with food. Third. Now he must also tell at what rate population can increase and what are the possibilities of expanding means of subsistence. So Malthus says that if left unchecked, population grows in geometric fashion, geometric progression. In 25 years time, population becomes 1, 2, 4, 8. If in the beginning of some period, population is 1, then after 25 years it becomes 2, then 4, then 8. It increases in geometric fashion. It doubles every 25 years. 
Malthus also said, and it's, uh, he, not, he did not simply speculate, he, he said these things based on empirical data available to him uh, from Americas and Europe of that time. Whatever data, the data were not very sophisticated in those days, but whatever data he could find from Europe and America of that time, he said that population, if there are no checks on population, that means pop, uh, population can grow in a geometric progression, 1 to 4, 8, every 25 years. Using the uh, formula of doubling time, that rate of growth, uh, a population doubles in time t, then rate of growth is 70 by t. So, this gives us a rate of growth of 70 divided by 25, a population doubles in 25 years. You know, this is derived from exponential formula p t equal to p 0 e raised to power r t. And if p t is 2 times p 0, then uh, the relationship between r and t will be like this, approximate. It, it should be 0 0.69, but approximately r equal to 70 by t. So, 70 by 25. That means population can grow at a rate 2.8 percent per year. Malthus predicted that in most favorable circumstances, not always, in favorable circumstances when uh, checks on population, a population is left unchecked. Population can be checked through family planning program, through communication, westernization, modernization, education, development can make people more rational and they start having less number of children. That is a different issue. If there is no check on population, if there is no check through control of births and also no check on population due to high infant mortality, female infanticide, sati, wars, pestilences, if there are no checks on population of any type, then the population can rise at at such, such a fast rate as 2.8 percent per year. This was Malthus's prediction that population grows in geometric progression. Food in best possible circumstances can grow only in arithmetic progression. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. Population can grow in geometric progression and in these time intervals, 25 years time interval, food can increase, means of subsistence can increase only in arithmetic progression. That is also not always, but in best possible circumstances. When there is more land for expansion of agriculture, when there is proper technological development on the field of agriculture, when there is no scarcity of capital or labor, then food can, means of production can increase only in arithmetic progression. Now, that means the gap between population and food will continue to increase. But it cannot increase indefinitely. The law of nature is, he said that this law of population growth is valid for all plants, animals, including human beings. No one can escape the law of population. And uh, providing a critique of scientific and socialistic theories of his time, he said no fancied equality of any kind, no institutional change, no amounts of socialism or communism can ever distort this law of population. Maybe for a few years, maybe for a decade, you can improve people's condition by practicing socialism, but not in the long run. In the long run, uh, the level of well-being of human society depends on the working of this formula on population. He is called a doomsday philosopher. 
Now, how will this imbalance between population and food be checked? It can be checked through moral restraints. Since he was a Christian priest, so he would not think of any other thing to control births. He can think only of moral restraints. And since in Christianity, celibacy or brahmacharya, celibacy is, is defined as one of the highest virtues. So Malta said that moral restraints, people do not marry and if they marry, they live the life of uh, brahmacharis. They do not go for sexual intercourse. Celibacy, rise in age of marriage, a large number of women or men, proportion of women and men not marrying at all and if they marry, not indulging in sexual activity. These are moral restraints and population must be checked by exercising moral restraints. If moral re this also comes under what he called preventive checks. So, Man is able, because man is rational, so man is able to think of preventive check. Preventive checks operate through births. Man can control the number of births. Another possibility of controlling births is voice. Voice is also part of preventive check. You can control births by practicing voice. In voice, he includes family planning. Interestingly, most people in the world later on, during last century, in the second part of the last century, supported family planning programs in less developed countries by using Malthusian theory. But Malthus himself was against family planning program. He was against use of artificial birth control methods. He was against uh, say sterilization and condoms and oral pills or IUCD because he is a Christian priest. And he cannot think of uh, people practicing family planning to restrict family size or number of children. For him, this is the ideal thing. Virtuous, moral, religious, enlightened persons will limit family size. Family size means number of children by exercising moral restraints. You can see that there is a parallel between Gandhian theory of population and Malthusian theory of population. Gandhiji was also a great advocate of population control in our country, but he was in favor of population control by using brahmacharya, not anything else. And for Gandhiji, very much like Malthus, practice of brahmacharya is not confined only to achieving the goal of a small uh, family size or reducing birth rate of the country, but brahmacharya is important for attaining uh, or uh, for realizing Brahman, truth for realization of truth, for realization of truth, some kind of nirvana or liberation or for the highest possibility of growth of mankind, brahmacharya is must. So Malthus was against this, but he still he included these things in the category of preventive checks. You can reduce population by using these things, family planning, homosexuality, uh, prostitution. You see, these are the things, in all of them, people are indulging in sexual activity. But that sexual activity is not giving rise to population growth. That is the idea. So, in both the cases, moral restraints and vice, there is restriction on number of births. This is religious, this is irreligious, this is sinful. 
so he used the term wise for that and if man does not practice moral restraints and man also does not go for wise many more things are included in wise but the essence is that these all refer to sexual activities which do not yield in childbirth then there will be positive checks positive checks operate through death while preventive checks operate through birth uh, positive checks operate through death so death will rise how will death rise that is not important there may be high infant mortality rate child mortality rate maternal mortality rate there may be droughts epidemics child exposure violence of all types homicides suicides wars all those things which increase death rate will come under positive checks this is positive because this is natural positive in the sense of being natural man made checks operate through reduction of birth rate and positive checks operate through increase in death rate now this death rate can be increased by social conditions or by natural conditions in 13th 14th century in africa and parts of europe and then it 15 uh, 200 years later more in europe when bubonic plague broke out there were large number of deaths in some of the cities population up to half or sometimes three fourth of the population was just eliminated in a few months time due to bubonic plague kalajar tuberculosis a small pox there were so many epidemics at that time and malthus was saying that if the food population balance is disturbed then either man should do something to regain the balance or the nature will do something or such social conditions will be created because of imbalance between population and food that the death rates will rise this includes both natural factors like epidemics droughts excessive rainfall shortage of rainfall and wars and conflicts and all those social conditions which increase the death rate people may invent new norms new institutions which will create more death female infanticide sati child exposure in china children were just left behind, left uh, they were just abandoned to die this was called child exposure after birth children were just thrown away social social factor so whether it is due to natural factors or social factors population uh, will have high death rate and so the size of population will decline this was malthus now uh, many things can be said and uh, since i work in this area of population so i am tempted to say many things but i know that within limited time i must also address the other questions so let me tell you that uh, uh, but one thing i am definitely tempted to say that why malthus is called a doomsday philosopher is that in everything you see there is uh, unhappiness malthus believed that for happiness of man uh, a faithful loving relationship between a man and a woman is important a man or a woman can be happy only in faithful and loving relationship which includes sex now the things which is prescribing moral restraints according to malthus this is good for maintaining a balance between food and population but moral restraint will make man unhappy vice will also vice obviously makes man unhappy 
and death, wars, pestilence, they are also factors of unhappiness. Which means that man can never be happy. Malthus, uh, contradicting the ideas of scientists and socialists, Malthus said that he is not very hopeful of a good future of mankind. Because there is a natural law of population which operates on plants, animals, men, all living beings. And the law of population is that population has a tendency to grow faster than means of subsistence available to it. So man will never be happy. Man will either exercise moral restraint or vice and if none, then positive checks follow. So this is Malthus's principle of population. And this essay was published uh, anonymously. Malthus was very much afraid of reactions to such ideas. So he did not write his name. Only later people came to know that there is some priest, T.R. Malthus, Thomas Robert Malthus, who wrote this essay. And there was so much pressure on Malthus to defend his position that uh, he, uh, this became his mission of life and he continued to work in this field of population throughout his life and published more than six editions of this essay, of this book by revising data, arguments, by collecting more statistics, by trying to understand more the issues of population. The last edition was published after his death. But his basic position remained same, that man can never be happy because the law of population operates. Now let us look at what has happened. Uh, this is a theory, but what exactly happened to human population? Can human population increase at such a rate? Now if we look at world population, uh, I am only telling you some major landmarks in the growth of population. The first billion, the first billion landmark in the history of world population was reached in 1820 AD. We do not know when did man first appear on the planet Earth, but assuming that man appeared on Earth some five or six million years ago in some shape. Then you see, and maybe to begin with, uh, there were only two persons, one man, one woman. So in such a long period of history, in 50 to 60 lakh years of man's existence on earth, uh, the rate of growth of population was so low, you can calculate using that PT equal to P0, raised power RT, that the rate of growth of population must have been around 0.0001% or something. Very low, very low rate of growth of population. In lakhs of years, uh, the world population achieved first billion mark in 1820. And after that, the second billion in 1930. For reaching the first billion point, the world population took 50 lakh, 60 lakh years. Uh, means of subsistence, maybe Malthus was right, that food was less. In ancient, primitive, less developed society, food was less, so population was also less. As development of society took place and there was more food, more agricultural production, more subsistence, so population started growing and it reached the first billion mark in 1820. The second mark was reached in 1930, third billion mark was reached in 1960, fourth billion was reached in 1974, 
fifth billion was reached in 1987, sixth billion was reached in 1999, and today in 2012, we have a population of around 7 billion. And there are predictions that our population will continue to increase. There are predictions that the world population will stop somewhere at 9 billion in year 2050. At present, the rate of growth of the world population is 1.2 percent per year. So it's not as high as Malthus thought, 2.8 maximum. Population growing geometrically at 2.8 percent per year. But still, it's rising quite fast. 1.2 percent means if there is no further decline in the growth rate of population, then 70 by 1.2, it takes about 60 years to double the population. If there is no further reduction in growth rate of population, then 60 years from now means uh, in 2072, we will be 14 billion. But there are predictions that the rate of growth of world population is declining, and therefore, we can stabilize at 9 billion in 2050. We will look into why did population increase at this rate. 1 billion 50 lakh years, second billion only 130 years, 110 years, sorry, 110 years, then only in 30 years, then only 14 years, then 13 years, then 12 years. Almost every decade we are adding 1 billion population. Now this explains why after 1930, population growth became an issue in 19th century in Europe. But population growth became a real issue in the world, particularly in the context of developing countries after 1930, because this was the rate at which world population was growing, and largely due to growth of population in developing countries. I will stop this lecture by reading a paragraph from an interesting book. This is by Ramchandra Guha, India after Gandhi. Uh, recently, this Ramchandra Guha is a sociologist. Some, some of you may have heard his name, a very prolific writer. And he wrote a book, India after Indra, uh, India after Gandhi. Uh, he is quoting a demographer. Paul Eldridge, uh, Paul Eldridge, uh, a biologist from Stanford University. He wrote a book, Population Bomb, and make, he made a prediction that in 1970s, the world population will face crisis. Very negative description of what could happen to world population in 70s, 80s. It's horrifying. Now, Ramchandra Guha is quoting a few lines from Paul Eldridge's book, uh, and he writes, to quote, the, respect, uh, uh, to, uh, the respected Stanford biologist, Paul Eldridge, wrote that while he had understood the population explosion intellectually for a long time, he came to understand it emotionally, one stinging hot night in Delhi a couple of years ago. As his taxi crawled through the streets, he saw around him, what he saw, uh, now Ramchand Guha is quoting Paul Eldridge, people eating, people washing, people sleeping, people visiting, people arguing and screaming, people thrusting their hands through the taxi window, begging, people defecating and urinating, 
people clinging to buses people herding animals people 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 paul elders he predicted that uh, in 1970s in the world in including in the developed countries there will be great crisis starvation death and the title uh, of his book the population bomb itself connotes that population is growing population is exploding we started using the term population explosion for what happened to population during this period we use the term population explosion that population is exploding population bomb is exploding and elvis said that uh, the consequences of explosion of population bomb in the developing countries and when uh, when these westerners talk about developing countries they refer most of the time to india because india is one of the largest developing countries so population bomb is explode is exploding and the consequences of this population bomb would be much more painful and for a prolonged period of time then the consequences of explosion of hydrogen bomb and nuclear bomb when uh, the atom bombs exploded in japan hiroshima nagasaki people died but the pain was less because they died in seconds in minutes in days in population bomb when population bomb explodes in developing countries people may not die immediately they may die in 10 years 20 years 30 years but suffering will be much more severe and because of uh, severity intensity of suffering wars conflicts food shortage malnutrition various types of diseases infections uh, and due to shortage of food fighting with each other insecurity uh, the consequences of explosion of population bomb will be much more disastrous than the consequences of explosion of hydrogen bomb this book became very paul ellis book population bomb became very famous though today in 2012 uh very few people talk about such things and i will explain what the reasons are in the next lecture